Hello, and uh, I wish you a very nice Tuesday afternoon. You happen to be in Europe. Uh, today we'll follow with the second day of our online sets of webinars, in workflow week uh, through the eyes of a structural engineer. Uh, today's topic uh, uh, is called Enrich your 3D BIM braid model with analytical data and results using, using advanced design. Advanced design is our structural analysis software. And let me introduce shortly myself. Uh, my name is uh, Fert Lanik and I'm a local product manager for Crytek Simulate products in Czech Republic. Simulate products are the products, as I said, the main product, structural analysis software, FEM software, advanced design, and other software advanced design modules that could be used in multiple platforms, and also power packs for Revit. Uh, let me shortly introduce our structural analysis software advanced design just uh, short uh, key features our software is part of the BIM workflow uh, we implemented most of the international design codes especially the euro codes and north american codes of course is the fem analysis fem analysis software uh, we Present it as a fast and very easy uh, to use. What is included is, for example, automatic load generator for wind, wind and uh, snow loadings. Uh, we use our special multi-core mesh and FEM engine. We are able to design reinforced concrete, timber and steel elements and also the steel connections. For seismic design, there is a possibility to have a capacity design check, and the standard is the automated documentation production. If I go a bit, a bit more in details about advanced design, loading, and finite element analysis, uh, as I said, 3D climatic load generator and also seismic load generator. Uh, for the seismic using seismic spectrums according to Euro code and North American codes. Uh, we provide analytical links and possible to use the rigid diaphragms as a substitute for, for slabs, for example, hollow core slabs. There is traffic load wizard for defining the transport loading. We also implement the global and local imperfections for structures, as I said, powerful engine. For concrete design itself, uh, again, the international codes are implemented for design of concrete, reinforced concrete elements. We use uh, our advanced design modules to uh, platform multiple platforms these can be used in advanced design uh, in the Revit as power pack and also as standalone standalone features we can design different types of uh, structures beams columns walls footings and in coming version we'll be able to design slabs directly in advanced design as well Using design templates, uh, possibility to, in a rainforest concrete, to use uh, deflection check, uh, taking into account uh, cracked uh, cross sections. Are you able to generate the 3D repair cages and with reinforcement drawings? The standard, again, detailed design reports. And lastly, not last, uh, advanced uh, design for steel for the elements that are not covered in Eurocode 3 for lateral torsional buckling we 
of our special advanced letter torsional buckling check using seven degrees of freedom elements. There is an ability of steel member optimization. Again, strong and detailed design reports. Directly in advanced design integrated steel connections. Complete library of floors and roofs and connection to other softwares. So let's go into the today's topic, the agenda of the presentation. In this presentation, we will go through setting and modeling in Revit. The second step will be transferring the model into advanced design for structural design and adding loading and analyzing the model. And the last step will be synchronization and taking the results back to Revit and possibility to generate reinforcement either using uh, reinforcement for slabs or reinforcement for rebar for elements. Just before we go uh, into the more detail, uh, if you have any question, please put them put them in the question bar. I'll try to answer at least some of them at the end of the webinar. Uh, if you don't get time for to answer all the questions, I will of course note them and come back to you after the webinar is finished. So we're starting uh, with Revit. First, we will check the analytical settings that are necessary for correct export of the analytical model. Second step is model itself. We'll check the analytical model and the possibilities of loading supports and load cases in Revit. And the last step will be uh, using our add-on BIM Connect for direct export into our structural software. So we will start uh, our project now as Revit. You can see some administrative building. And first, uh, we go into the analytical settings. Uh, we need to check uh, the settings for proper export. So some automated uh, auto-detecting uh, differences between the physical and analytical model. As you know, the physical model and analytical model are two models available in Revit. In the same ribbon, uh, you can see that we can add loads, load cases, and load combinations as well. If I open some uh, template file for a structural template, you can see that uh, these are already defined there. But it depends on your own template as well. In our case, uh, we try to skip the defining, defining the, the loading in the Revit and uh, load combination as we missing the load combination generator and climatic loads generator. Uh, we check the supports. It's possible to add them in the Revit as well, called here boundary conditions. But as you see, we get some footings and continuous foundation beams that are automatically exported into our structural software advanced design. So no need of this. And the only possible support would be planner support, but I would say it's much easier to do it in advanced design. Next, we check our settings for BIM Connect uh, we, for the export uh, or import loads. So we don't need to export or import loads. Uh, we can set uh, for exporting, maybe exporting with the only analytical model, but uh, it's uh, not necessary right now. The most important is setting the concrete section mappings with the proper uh, families used in Revit. Uh, and I said in the beginning, we won't add any load, but uh, we put the load case for the self weight. Then we can uh, export into, into advanced design. You can see the salvate load case selected. 
an automatic launching of the software after. I just press the advanced design button and do the export automatically. So now we get the model open in advanced design. And so the model will be open in advanced design. I'll just say a few short words. Uh, again, the workflow in advanced design will be adding the supports. As I said, they'll be automatically synchronized from Revit, except of the planner supports, in case, of course, we have uh, the footings or footing beams, loading areas. Uh, that's the workflow we need to imply in advanced design to be able to generate climatic uh, loads and also distribute the planar loads into linear elements. As I said before, the generation of load cases and especially combinations uh, is not that straightforward in advanced and in Revit, so the preferable way is to set the loading in advanced design, possibility to direct load on selected elements. The load combination, I think that it's uh, basically missing in Revit, uh, used to our load generators, but there's also a possibility to import the loading and the load combinations from Excel sheet. And the last step in advanced design will be the analysis of the model itself. Uh, using the same assumptions prior to calculation, and then using uh, advanced design result window for result and model export back to Revit. So now you can see the model, uh, the supports, the footings are transferred into point supports and uh, continuous footings into linear supports. On the left uh, hand side, you can see a project browser where we can easily manipulate with the, with the project, uh, switch on or switch off uh, the systems, the floors or the subsystems. And as well, we can define the loading here. You can see the that load was already the load case for the dead load was uh, imported from, from Revit. And we can use the project browser for creating uh, load case families. Load case already defined, so we just add live load, snow load, and wind load at the beginning. The self weight it's assigned automatically to uh, elements. It could be changed as well. The life load has some, uh, the load case has some values, some settings, and we can choose, for example, the slabs for the life load and apply the life load on the selected slabs. The value and the direction of the loading, and it's applied. I'll skip uh, here a bit. Uh, I apply some other loading, more difficult ones uh, by shape to the other floors. And what we need now is the uh, load areas. The load area can be defined directly on, on the slab and or can be defined by clicking the, the points. The service of the area, uh, load area is, uh, there is two purposes. One is to distribute the load from uh, the load area to elements that are under or uh, in the same plane as the load area. And the second is the generation of uh, climatic loads automatically. You can see the load area has some uh, some properties in the property window, the span direction, where is the load is distributed in Y and X direction on both, 
uh, it can serve as rigid diaphragma as well and setting uh, whether it will distribute the load from snow and wind generate them uh, can for example set the snow accumulation and the wind uh, we can define the coefficients based the standard are based on the on the used standard now as as long as we have the, the, the load areas defined we can we can see if we are they are assigned into the special systems so we can easily operate with them select them and uh, as we have them we can uh, use the automatic generator for climatic loads snow and wind just at the moment delete the, the loads we had there the load case is prepared with our loads and you can see the settings for the snow loading typical value the snow load based on the typical value uh, same for wind setting the wind speed region you can use i'm using the check standard so the map of the czech republic and uh, get the the values automatically set according to wind speed region as soon as uh, this is done uh, we can create automatically the climatic loads okay, once more automatic generation of loads for snow and wind wind can measure moment uh, can see the for example the snow drift loads automatically generated in one direction and an X and Y direction and similar the distribution automatic distribution of the wind loads based on the used codes on in one direction for uh, purposes of uh, not having such a big file and not so long calculation just for this model we just use one snow load and one wind load uh, we can easily renumber the wind load case so it's in the it's number four right now and what we are uh, needing next is the combinations you can see I provided already uh, defined some of them so we will delete uh, the already defined one and create new ones you can use two different uh, generators the simple one based on a euro code or the detail one that is a matrix based generator with the dependencies of each uh, load case and setting some rules uh, exclusion and for load cases and load families the other possibility now is to export or to uh, import the uh, load cases from Excel Excel sheet uh, it's not the only loads we can define we can also define uh, several different ones type of loads for example seismic loads and temporal dynamic loads uh, as soon as we define them then automatically the model analysis is prepared and with the uh, two possible methods for defining the modes either using eigenvectors or load dependent risk vectors and uh, the modes can be targeted by either by a number of modes or in the load dependent risk vectors by participation ratio of course uh, the earthquake family or seismic family and dynamic temporal load family has their own uh, has their own values and settings can for example set the harmonic 
harmonic solicitation type. But as uh, is this not exactly the point of the, the presentation today, just to show you the possibilities there. And uh, the next step is to apply uh, the properties, the design properties for uh, the reinforced concrete elements. There are properties either in set in properties or if you use the template, for example, for columns, then the properties are set in the template table. You can set the cover of the reinforcement. You can set uh, if you want to calculate cracking or not. Uh, we can set uh, defining the uh, column or beam calculation, buckling lengths and so on. Similar setting for the slabs. Again, you can see used general design template slab. Go to design template and for the slab, again, setting for the finite element calculation, the general one, and then the design properties for, for slab. Here we don't select the automatic, uh, automatic uh, correction of uh, reinforcement for cracking. You can set the punching shear. Uh, and for the top slab, uh, you see that the values are available, the FM values are available in properties and uh, design values, design conditions as well, as we don't use the template in this case. And here we set the correction of the reinforcement according to cracking. Same uh, for the other slabs, uh, we don't set the design calculation, so we, on the other elements, we only calculate uh, the FEM results. Uh, before we do the uh, design calculation, we have to set the settings, uh, type of calculation method, coefficients, either if you use a creep and shrinkage in the calculation and calculation sequences, uh, defining the detailed reinforcement, punching, and so on. As soon as we are done, we can start the calculation itself. Should run without any any problems. We don't have a, such a big model, and now we can display the results either of FEM results, forces, for example, select the columns at the bottom and display the moments around Y axis. Similar for slabs, you can, for example, display uh, the deflection, the elastic deflection of the selected slab. You select the slab and we can display the elastic deflection. The next one, you can see the elastic deflection of the top slab from FEM results. And the other set of the results are the design results. Here we can find, for example, total deflection with the cracked section of the concrete. We can compare the results and the deflection, the elastic deflection and the total cracked concrete slab deflection. There are several ways, of course, to display the, uh, display the values. You can use, for example, easel lines. And we can save the views to use them further in our uh, analyzing process in the post-processor. can switch between the views and they are saved. So they are useful for next work. Before we uh, continue, we have to set the options for export of linear elements and export of theoretical reinforcement in application options. Then go to the BIM window, import button and export to the 
gdcx file. So that's the process uh, done in advanced design. And the last step will be transferring, as we already started, transferring the results and the uh, area of rebar back into Revit. So the synchronization that will synchronize back the model from advanced design to Revit will show how to use the structural analysis add-on to get the internal forces on linear elements using our PowerPack for Revit uh, add-on design to import the loads of linear elements into PowerPack and to be able to design rebar of the RC elements. And for the slabs, uh, we uh, show the possibility to use uh, PowerPack uh, detailing and the new version of 2022 there will be a power pack design for slabs as well available, and uh, slabs will be possible to design inside the power pack for Revit design. At the moment, we will do it using power pack for Revit detailing based on areas of rebar. So, first, we have to synchronize the results. For synchronization, we choose import FEM results for combinations. And provide the synchronization, same as you could see probably yesterday. Select the proper file. And in this case, select all the changes, accept them, and apply them. In this way, we will load the, not only the model, but also also the results. Just one uh, short uh, reminder, if we export from the project window in advanced design, you only export the geometry, not the loading. Okay, we are back into Revit, and we can see that in Result Manager, we can see all the all the results. Let's choose the ones for linear elements. And let's, for example, display moments around Y for the columns. We can play with the settings of the the, the, the view. You can see the the results are only one set. So if you want to display the results, for example, only on the bottom bottom floor, you just have to hide or set the view for such a structure. Then the display will be only for this part, moments in Y and Z. Of course, you can choose any of the imported combinations, apply the elements for the elements, moments, same forces, just one uh, small reminder, the offset force won't be the, the horizontal to one, it's the local axis Fx, so the Fx force will be the horizontal one for uh, loading. The next one is our power pack uh, design. Power pack design, we import the loads and combination into our power pack. You can see that the uh, loads are there. Same for the combinations and already the internal efforts for each load case for the given selected member. You can either put uh, calculate or put a constructive disposition that will show us the uh, minimal reinforcement, and then we can edit, or we can calculate straight with uh, with the checks of the rebar. We can show the rebar 
and edit it and then in case we need it recalculate just show you the, the result here of the rebar of the column based on the results from advanced design the same just in power pack detailing bottom rebar either we can edit in revit 3d view or we can edit it directly in uh, our special window in this case the results for theoretical reinforcement or rebar are imported from advanced design you can see the the moments compared to moments or the, the area of the rebar in advanced design they are uh, the same of course we can display the bottom reinforcement in the other direction you can display then with iso lines and x laces and several different types of display but then that's that's not all you can in the same window define the rebar in the given direction so it's bottom rebar in this case in x direction just select the area set the offset of the first rebar we set for example 50 millimeters and then we can play with the spacing and the diameter of the rebar you can see by changing that the colors change and it is we can easily detect whether it's uh, the rebar is satisfactory for given given area you can see for example for distance spacing 300 12 diameter is not satisfactory but diameter 14 is okay now you can see uh, the results for real reinforcement that's already put in the slab you can of course define other other areas and top and bottom and then finish and generate a rebar just isolate the slab and you can see the rebar using again our power pack detailing uh, possibilities in this case rebar visibility you can use rebar round openings or just use edge reinforcement and several different functions that will be probably shown to you tomorrow during the presentation here we choose the u-bar at the edge the length of the u-bar and we can add some edge bar edge bars and just generate the rebar once the rebar is defined by using our parapet detailing or parapet design it behaves as a standard uh, standard rebar in Revit the length of rebar the setting of the diameter spacing the way of spacing if you use just number of spacing or just single bar so uh, we use the results of the advanced design for direct uh, definition of the rebar of course you can play with the views and uh, uh, set the drawings but the point of this presentation was uh, showing you how to get the results from advanced design from Revit to advanced design and then back to Revit and use them once more that's all for the today's presentation if you have uh, any more questions please uh, contact me on these addresses or any of my colleagues uh, as i showed already on wednesday thursday and friday we follow with our webinars 
Steve tomorrow uh, rebar in using Powerpack in Revit, Michal on Friday about steel connections, and Adriana Adriana on Friday, sorry, uh, Michal on Thursday, Adriana on Friday I will show you a complete ring workflow for steel projects. Uh, for any more information, uh, you can contact our company on these addresses or emails. Uh, if you would like to try advanced design itself, that's a possibility to get through this link and get into the form and download a free trial of advanced design. And you can also contact our local representatives in each country. Uh, once more, uh, check some of the questions. There is one question from Carlos Coya. Uh, the program has any tools to edit Revit analytical model? Yes, uh, it actually does. It's part of the, the power pack and there are possibilities for editing of uh, the Revit analytical model. To Kouraj, if I, if I read your name uh, well, I'll send you the info about our Canadian Canadian offices, the branches in Eastern Canada. Otherwise, uh, if it's at the moment all, I would like to thank you for attending this webinar, and I hope you'll be able to join my colleagues tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. Well, thank you very much, and have a nice day.